This is your WCFW Daily News Roundup for 105.7 CFW in Chippewa Falls and 93.5 The Tap in Eau Claire. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. More than 100 Wisconsin local governments have applied for some of $300 million in federal COVID stimulus money. The Flexible Facility Program aims to connect libraries and other public buildings to the Internet. Awards will be announced by October. Republicans are asking voters to move the power to spend federal money in Wisconsin from the governor to the legislature. It's the GOP response to the billions that came to Wisconsin because of the pandemic. There are two referendum questions on statewide ballots August 13th. Republicans are urging yes votes. Democrats are urging no votes. Senator Tammy Baldwin is rejecting calls for President Biden to resign. She tells WISN-TV's up front that Biden is capable of finishing out his term. You have full faith in the president's ability, his mental acuity, as we sit here today to lead the nation. I think the administration and Biden is perfectly capable of finishing out the term. The president himself. The president himself. Democratic Party delegates start voting this week to formally nominate Vice President Kamala Harris to be their nominee for president. A study committee is looking into possibly regulating artificial intelligence in Wisconsin. The goal is to ensure AI doesn't harm consumers or data. Look for public hearings around the state. People fishing in Wisconsin will soon be able to carry guns. The Department of Natural Resources overturned a ban after gun supporters sued the state. After the rule was reversed last week, both sides agreed to drop the lawsuit. You're likely hearing more about Project 2025. It's a sweeping far-right plan which calls for everything from replacing civil servants with political appointees to dismantling the Department of Education. David Nevins publishes The Fulcrum, which is analyzing Project 2025. The cross-partisan approach that we believe in is, in some cases, the federal government can do certain things more effectively, in some cases, not as effectively. And that's the discussion we need to have as a nation. Donald Trump has denied knowing much about Project 2025, even though most of its authors served in his former administration. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Here's what you need to know closer to home. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources has announced that the invasive emerald ash borer has been found in Burnett County, meaning there are no counties left in the state uninfested by the beetle. DNR officials say they have confirmed a report of a possible infestation from June 13th in the town of Meenan. They worry the beetle will eventually kill more than 99% of the white, black, and green ash trees in the state. Cities like Eau Claire have taken to removing the infected ash trees on city property entirely. A memorial has been erected on West Claremont Avenue to honor the 18-year-old who was killed in a crash on Thursday. According to the Eau Claire Police Department, Peyton Lice was driving his motorcycle on West Claremont Avenue when he collided with an SUV that was turning onto the road from American Boulevard. According to a WEAU report, community members laid out flowers, pictures, and a plaque for Peyton. His friends reported that he was a couple of weeks away from joining the Air Force after graduating. The new owners of the former Regency Inn and Suites are getting their renovations underway quickly. According to a WEAU report, the new owners are planning to rebrand the troubled property as Willow Inn and Suites and give it a complete renovation to distance themselves from its past as a criminal hotspot. In their plans, the new owners identified doors that don't close properly, outdated security systems, and bad previous management as issues to address before reopening the South Hastings Way location. Eau Claire played host to a new resource fair over the weekend aimed at helping new parents and families. According to a WQOW report, Mama Bear Family Care hosted the first Empowered Parents Expo on Saturday, offering resources to parents on things like birth center information, massage and physical therapy, and support for mental health. Organizers say giving families the resources and support they need early has a huge long-term benefit for their children, and they're hoping to make the expo a yearly event. Eau Claire's Deputy City Attorney Douglas Hoffer has been appointed to serve on the Eau Claire County Circuit Court. In a press release, Governor Tony Evers announced that Hoffer would take over the seat recently vacated by Judge Michael Schumacher, completing a term that will end in July of 2025. Hoffer has worked in the City Attorney's Office since 2013 and says he will work diligently to ensure the court system is fair and impartial. City Attorney Stephen Nick also expressed his strong support for Hoffer in the new role. 
The HSHS Act, or Hospital Stability and Health Services Act, was introduced by Senator Tammy Baldwin on Thursday. According to a press release, the new legislation is meant to protect communities from the sudden closure of essential hospitals. If passed into law, a closing hospital system would be required to notify the Department of Health and Human Services and develop a plan with public input to connect patients with accessible care. The notification would be required at least 90 days in advance of the closure. The City of Eau Claire will be offering an in-person absentee ballot drive through to residents over the next couple of weeks. From Monday, July 30th to Friday, August 9th, City of Eau Claire residents will be able to use the drive through in the City Hall parking lot on weekdays from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. to cast their votes for the August 13th primary. Residents will also be able to use the drive through to register to vote if they haven't already, and a vehicle will not be required despite the drive through title of the ballot drop-off location. The Visit Eau Claire Board of Directors has announced the appointment of its new executive director. According to a press release, Kenzie Havlicek will take over the position full-time after serving as the interim executive director prior to the official decision. Havlicek has worked in a variety of roles within the organization since joining as an intern in 2010, including as deputy director. The Visit Eau Claire organization seeks to build the tourism economy of the city through business, sports, and leisure activities. And that's what you need to know. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. Jordan Love on his record-breaking contract. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with Sports NFL in Green Bay. The Packers held practice in pads as training camp enters its second week. Jordan Love completing a 47-yard pass to Christian Watson on his first day back after signing a contract making him the highest-paid quarterback in NFL history. Love told me the talks began back in May. I asked him what was it like when he didn't have a deal at the start of camp. Yeah, you know, it's definitely been the waiting game uh, these past couple days. I'm just trying to be patient. Um, but knowing that it was going to get done here soon. But yeah, I mean, right after we got done, you know, my agents FaceTimed me and uh, gave me the news and broke to me. So it was a, a very special day hearing that and uh, just going through the, the whole motions of, you know, obviously getting a contract, being able to be here, and then just obviously being able to get back on the field with the guys. So it was uh, it was definitely a, a very special day. Baseball tonight, the Brewers host the Atlanta Braves. Colin Ray on the mound for Milwaukee. Devin Williams back as the closer. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Chicago Fire had a vacancy that is now filled. The show is adding a proven brand in Dermot Mulrooney, who will replace Eamon Walker as Battalion Chief Wallace Bowden. To be clear, Dermot Mulrooney is not Dylan McDermott. Walker left the show at the end of Season 12. Mulrooney will play the new chief, Dom Paschal. The show will debut its 13th season, September 25th. If you're thinking about starting an OnlyFans account, don't rule out traumatizing your child by having them edit your photos. Sopranos actress Drea DiMatteo says her 13-year-old son, known as Blackjack, edits all her photos for OnlyFans. DiMatteo told former Soprano castmates Jamie Lynn Siegler and Robert Eiler on their Not Today Pal podcast that she had no choice but to start an OnlyFans account because being an anti-vaxxer cost her roles in Hollywood. If it came down to getting a vaccine or my kids seeing me naked, I would sprint to the pharmacy and ask for a double. If you're tired of Ryan Reynolds is a good guy stories, this won't help. Leslie Uggams, who was working as an actress before Reynolds was born, played his sidekick in the new film Deadpool in Wolverine. The 81-year-old actress says Reynolds made her feel safe in the new high-octane Marvel flick. Uggams plays foul-mouth Blind Al a long way from her Emmy-winning role of Kizzy in the miniseries Roots in 1977. Deadpool and Wolverine opened this past weekend in theaters. The lovable Natalie from Facts of Life, also known as Mindy Cohen, has a beef with former castmates. The New York Post reports that a Facts of Life revival was 86 by one of the cast members. According to Cohen, TV legend Norman Lear approached the four actresses about reuniting for a reboot. The meetings took place over Zoom during COVID. Cohen said one of the actresses went behind the other's backs and tried to set up her own deal for her own show. The Post says Cohen did not specify which cast member it was. I really hope it wasn't Tootie. The good news for fans of The Boys is that there will be a season five. The bad news is that it will be the last season, according to showrunner Eric Kripke. More not so great news for fans. Producers say the season will take two years to shoot and is still in the early stages of development. Producers of the Amazon Prime show say the soonest the new season can drop would be mid-2026. It appears things are finally on track for an I Am Legend sequel. Legendary screenwriter Akiva Goldsman told Deadline there will be good news soon. How can you have a sequel when the main character died in the original? Goldsman says they are sequelizing an alternative ending. When it comes to millions of dollars, Hollywood can be incredibly resourceful and creative. The first installment of the Will Smith film raked in over a half a billion dollars in 2007. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Peach Wabo. Weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network.
Scattered thunderstorms are possible this morning with sunshine by this afternoon. It's going to be warm and muggy with a high in the mid-80s today. Tonight, it'll be mostly clear, 66 tomorrow. Mostly sunny, slight chance of an isolated thunderstorm with highs tomorrow in the upper 80s. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Temperature now 73. That's your WCFW and the TAP Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at wcfw.fm or thetap.fm.